Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for part two of my sewing vlog. This was filmed last weekend, Saturday night, um, right after the previous vlog you saw. It was just too much footage to put it all in that one video. So the video that you're about to see is actually just the rest of that night, which was all about sewing a new tote bag for a new sweater project. So this one's a pretty straightforward tutorial and kind of sew with me and in it I make this tote bag with a little drawstring topper to contain my new sweater project that I showed you guys um, in the last video. I'll give you a little update. I've only put a few more rows, well maybe more than a few, um, into this but yeah this is my DRK everyday sweater that I'm knitting in Madeline Tosh Sport, Madeline Tosh Sport in the color Pop Rocks and um, I needed a new tote bag to store the project and I wanted to take you guys along with me. So keep on watching if you wanna learn how I make this super simple knitting project bag. Hi friends, it has been uh, quite a few hours since I last saw you guys. Uh, my sister and her two oldest boys came over to swim. So we took a little bit of a pool break and it's like nine o'clock now. I had dinner, hung out. We watched um, Asteroid City. That is the new, what's it, Wes Anderson? Um, it was great. And I decided I do wanna sew the second knitting bag that I was planning on making today. So I made my little drawstring sock bag, perfect. And now I want to recreate this bag, but in a slightly larger size with a drawstring top. Um, so I'm gonna have to do some math and figure out how big I want this. And I'm, then I'll need to pick some fabrics. Once I know how big I want to make this, um, then I'll know how much fabric I need. Um, so yeah, let me do a little bit of math first. Okay, I figured out my measurements. This is like the bag that exists. This is the size I think I want. Don't worry about screenshotting these. As I actually cut my pieces out and make it, I will put the measurements on the screen for you because I'm just making this up. I mean, not making it up, but it's just like a boxed corner tote bag. Um, but I'll put the dimensions that I use. Next is to pick some fabric. Ooh, let's do it. So I picked out my fabrics. Um, this is gonna be the main exterior of my bag. This is gonna be the lining of my bag. How cute is this? Um, is this also from Tula Pink? No, this one was from Cotton and Steel, um, back before it was Ruby Star. So cute. So I'm gonna use these, these are both half yards and I'll need pretty much the full half yards to do the size bag I'm doing. And then this is gonna be the accent print for the drawstring topper to my bag. So the exterior, will be like this, which I think is super cute for my hot pink sweater. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get everything cut out. I'm gonna speed this process up. And um, of course I'll put the sizes of everything I'm cutting out on the screen if you want to follow along. Oh, I'm also gonna be using some fusible fleece. Uh, I didn't use any interfacing in the sock bag. Uh, it's just two layers of fabric because this is just such a small little drawstring bag. It just doesn't really need any structure. Um, you could obviously add it if you like it, but I don't really find it necessary. But for this bigger tote bag, I want it to be able to stand up on its own um, and kind of support its own weight. So I'm gonna use this kind of lightweight fusible fleece. Um, I like the Pelon 987F. I think I'm saying that right. I will link it down below for you, but that's my favorite fusible. And unfortunately, I only have this little bit left. This is actually, I think the Heat and Bond fusible fleece, which is not my favorite. I find this gets kind of bunchy, but um, I'm almost out of my Pelon. So I'm gonna see what I can get out of this. And then I have this as my backup. Two pieces for the exterior of my bag have been cut. I'm gonna cut two pieces for the lining in the exact same size. Two lining pieces cut to the same size as our exterior. And then the last piece we need is 
for the drawstring closure around the top of the bag. And these are the um, drawstring panels. Uh, I did realize that I forgot to factor in handles, so I'm gonna make some fabric handles to hold the bag. So yeah, let me get those cut out. I'm trying to decide what I wanna use for my handle. So this is the main exterior, and then this is up at the top for the drawstring. Do I want my handles to maybe be out of this same fabric? Or do I want to maybe do them like out of the lining? Yeah, I might just make the handles out of this lining fabric. Normally I would make handles out of a darker fabric just because they get handled. <laughs> um, but I think it'll be cute to have the bananas on the outside too. So I'm gonna make my handles out of the banana print or <laughs> I can't decide. Okay, maybe I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the handles one side gingham, one side banana print. That's what I'm gonna do, okay. So I cut two pieces for the inside of my handles and I'm gonna cut two of the same size pieces for the outside of my handles. Okay, handles cut out. Now I need to cut out interfacing um, for the back. And so I just need two pieces of interfacing that match the size of my exterior panels. I actually don't think I have any pieces big enough to use for this bag of my normal Pellon. So I'll have to use this heat and bond stuff, I think. So here's our interfacing. And actually, I think I'm gonna make interfacing for my handles too, just so they have a little bit of structure. And I think I will do it out of the fusible fleece just to match the bag. So I'm gonna cut out two pieces to match these handles. And actually I'm gonna cut these handle pieces narrower. I'm gonna cut them to one and a half inch, which is what the finished handle size will be. That way I don't have any fusible fleece in my seams and it'll make it easier to turn these handles inside out. Um, yeah. So I am just going to cut one and a half inch strips. Okay, let's take everything over to the ironing board and the sewing machine. So I've got all of my parts and pieces and I'm going to go ahead and fuse all of the handles and um, the exterior and get it ready for sewing. So I like to uh, fuse my fusible fleece onto the exterior of the bag just because I find it makes it look a little bit smoother um, like when you're looking at the bag rather than having it on the lining. So I'm gonna fuse to the exterior of both of my pieces. And I like to just start in the center and work my way to the edges so that way I don't get any weird bubbles. And with this heat and bond, um, I find that overheating the fusible is what kind of can cause wrinkles in the fabric. So I'm gonna try and be really careful with fusing this so I don't get, so I don't like create a wrinkly exterior fabric. Just going around and making sure all of my edges are really well fused. And yeah, I think we're good. So now first panel ready to go. I'm gonna do the second, I'm gonna do the handles. Let's go. Okay, so I'm just gonna try and make sure that I line up my fusible in the dead center and I might just kinda Press gently from this side and then I'll flip it over and make sure it's really good and fused down. So now my straps are fused and we're ready to start assembling the parts. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put my lining pieces right sides together and I am gonna sew down the two short sides and across the bottom, leave the top open. So now we have our lining pieces sewn together across three sides. I'm gonna do the same thing with our exterior pieces that have the fusible fleece on them. Just right sides together and sew down two short sides and across the bottom. And I'm gonna make sure I'm lining my fabric pieces up to each other and not worry about what the fusible fleece is doing. The fusible has kind of warped these pieces just a little bit, so I'm just putting some pins in to make sure everything stays together while I sew. I'm actually gonna lengthen my stitch length just a tiny bit since I'm going through so many layers. Okay, and so now we have our exterior pieces sewn together the same way as our interior. So we'll set that aside. Okay, so for the handles, I am gonna sew these right sides together. Uh, just like that, and we'll flip these inside out in a minute. I'm actually gonna sew it with this side up so I can just make sure my seam allowance is staying um, right outside that fusible fleece. And then we'll turn these uh, right side out. I keep meaning to buy one of those handy little tube turner things, but um, with this little two inch, one and a half inch uh, wide handle. It's really not too bad to just kind of get your fingers in there and manually, manually push it through. My two straps are right sides out. Um, we'll take them to the ironing board in just a minute. But first I am gonna sew these two pieces together into a tube. And we're gonna do that by sewing on both short sides. So I'm just gonna sew a quarter inch on both sides. Actually, sorry, before I do that, I do wanna leave a an opening in the center of the casing here, um, the center of the drawstring top for our actual drawstring. So I'm gonna mark that. And let's see, this is eight and a half inches. And I want to mark a two inch, let's see, do I want two inch? Maybe one and a half inch. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a two inch gap because this is gonna be folded in half, so it'll turn into a one inch and one inch um, gap once it's closed. So let's see, since I want a two inch gap, that means I need to measure, it is. So you wanna measure in three and one quarter inches from each corner. I just accidentally put one of those marks in the wrong spot. And then your two marks should be two inches apart. And so I'm gonna flip this around and do the same thing on this side. And so I'm sewing these right sides together on the short, the eight and a half inch long edges. And I'm going to stop when I get to my mark and leave a gap. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, let's take everything uh, back over to the ironing board. Okay, so this is our little tube here. And what we need to do is open this up and press it in half so that our raw edges are together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of press open the seams that I just created. And this is a tube, so it will be, you know, slightly annoying to do, but you just kind of pull it apart. And I'm gonna press my seams open. And now I'm gonna start folding it in half and I'm gonna press this whole thing in half. So it's like a donut, basically. And I'm just gonna make sure that my seams are all lined up with each other and that the raw edges are lined up. Okay, so this is gonna be what goes around the top of our bag 
and that we can kind of draw string close the top. Now I'm gonna work on fixing up these uh, straps because they got all wrinkled while we were turning them inside out. And I just wanna be able to press these nice and flat and I want um, there to be, you know, no lining showing on the top and no top shining showing through on the lining side. So I'm just gonna kind of manipulate the seams and make sure everything is pressed down nicely. Okay, cute, we have our straps. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of top stitching. Um, I'm separating these two panels where we have the split and I'm going to top stitch along the very top edge, maybe about an eighth of an inch in. And then I'm gonna do the other side, making sure to keep it split. Just top stitch one side at a time. And now we're gonna sew the casing. And so um, see where this splits right here? We want to sew a straight line all the way around that meets up. And so that's gonna create the little channel for where our um, drawstring will sit. I'm also realizing now that I don't know if I made this tall enough for what I want. Um, like I said, I'm just making this pattern up based on a basic tote bag pattern. So I didn't really think about this measurement too much. And now I'm wondering if it's going to be enough. We'll see. I'm going to keep going as is, but um, we'll see how it turns out. I may recommend to you to cut a slightly longer piece. We'll see. Again, I'm just gonna eyeball this and try to make sure I'm staying an inch away from the previous line I sewed. Okay, great. So now you can see we have our little drawstring channel um, with our openings at the end. Perfect. So next step is we need to box these corners the same way we did for the drawstring bag. And that just means pulling this apart, making sure everything is lined up. And I will grab my ruler. And this time I am gonna measure two and a half inches in from, uh, let's see, two and a half, two and a half. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna measure two and a half inches in from the corner here and I'm gonna mark it. And actually, since I'm sitting here, I'm not even gonna bother pinning it um, and doing, I'm just gonna do them one at a time while I have them folded and marked. So I'm gonna sew straight through. Okay, and before I cut these off, I am just gonna flip my bag right side out and kind of look at the shape I just created by boxing the corners and make sure the bag is the size that I want it to be. Okay, awesome. So that is, let's see, is that even on camera? Um, that is like the size of the bag. And so I'm really happy with that size. This is what the bottom looks like. It's about five inches. Uh, deep, which is what I was going for. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be any deeper. I think that's fine. Yeah, okay. So uh, now I'm gonna do that to the lining. And now I'm just going to cut this off to a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so to finish off our handles, I am just going to run a top stitch down both sides of the top of the straps, just about an eighth of an inch um, in from the edge. Okay. 
I'm gonna get the handles basted in place um, on the right side of the exterior of our bag. And um, I do need to measure to figure out exactly where I wanna place them. Uh, let's see. And I'm gonna lay them right side down on the right side of the bag. And I like this spacing. Let me get my little... Let's see, that's about seven inches. And so this is, let's see, 17, it should be about 17 and a half, but that's okay if it's not, let's see. Yeah, 17 and a half. So 17 and a half minus seven is 10 and a half. So if I measure five and a quarter in from each edge, let's see. Here. And then if I measure five and a quarter in here, yeah, I like that spacing. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do my handles. I'm going to attach the first one and then I'm going to attach the second one so that it lines up perfectly. So even if this one is slightly off by like a quarter inch or something, I'm going to make them both match. <laughs> um, so make sure you're only sewing through one layer of your bag and go ahead and just sew about an eighth of an inch of away from the top of the bag. And we're just going to attach our handles for the future steps. Okay, so now we can flip the bag over, make sure everything is nice and together. And now we have our previous strap to use for lining up the second one. So I'm just gonna make sure these are all lined up. Can you see that there? Hopefully so. Clip. And then line that one up and clip and then sew it to the bag. Okay, now we're gonna take our little drawstring topper and we're going to put it over the outside of our bag. So just slip it around the bag and we want our side seams to match Let's see if I can get that on camera. We want the side seams to match up and we want all the raw edges together up at the top. And I am going to clip it into place. I'm gonna get the sides first and then I'll get everything else. So now that we have these together, we're going to get our lining piece and let me get that thread and we're gonna open it up and you can see the right side is on the inside and we're going to put this around the whole bag. And we're gonna do the same thing we just did where we're gonna match up our side seams and all the raw edges right at the top of the bag and I'm just gonna adjust my clips to now include this lining. Okay, I just realized I forgot to do one thing, which was to leave a turning hole in my lining, but no big deal. I am just gonna get my seam ripper and I am gonna open up like a four inch hole. Let's say I'll go from here. Perfect, and so this is what we're gonna use um, to turn our bag uh, right side out and then we'll close this up in a second. Now, if you want, you could take this off and use your free arm again. This bag is big enough that I think I'll be able to hold everything out of the way while I sew it together. So now I'm gonna use kind of a generous quarter inch, even maybe a little bit closer to a half an inch to sew through all of my layers all the way around the bag. And you just wanna make sure that the back of your bag is not caught up in the seam that you're sewing.
Okay, so now we're gonna pull everything back through this lining. Woo! <laughs> um, so you can kind of see how everything's coming together now. Uh, before we do anything else, I'm going to close up the bottom of this bag and I'm gonna do it the same way I did on um, my other little drawstring bag. Just gonna get rid of some of these loose threads from where I seam ripped. Just using my fingers to finger press these little seam allowances down to make it neater for when I top stitch. You could also take it to the iron, but I mean, this is the bottom of the lining. It's not really gonna be seen. I'm just gonna top stitch really close to the edge to make sure everything gets sewn down. Okay, so that is what the bottom looks like now. I'm gonna get all these little loose threads. It's still kind of messy from where I had to seam rip. So now I'm gonna shove my lining um, down into my bag. And I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of join those corners from the box corners, like just use my fingers in there and push that one out. Looks great. Um, now we want to resolve the top of the bag. And so we want to push all of our seam allowance down into the lining and then we're gonna top stitch around the bag to kind of hold everything into place. Um, hi, I'm back. Uh, last night while I was filming the top stitching on my bag, my phone died and it was like 11 p.m. So I decided to call it a night and now it's Sunday afternoon and I'm gonna finish up this bag and this one, and um, in this video. I shouldn't say finish up this one. This one's done, I'll just show it to you. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to restart this video. I like got cut off last night, decided to call it a night, knit, went to bed. Um, but I actually haven't even watched to see where the video cut off. I think I was top stitching. And so that is how the top stitching turned out. And so you can see we have kind of like the big exterior. We have our super cute bananas. <laughs> and then this is our little like drawstring panel. I don't remember what I was calling it yesterday. Um, so the only thing I have left to do to finish this bag is insert the drawstring. And I was just looking through my twill tape and I really wanna use this white twill tape because you know, it matches the bag the best. Um, I could use more of the yellow, but mm, I don't know, that might be kind of cute. It's all pink, white, and black, maybe with a little pop of yellow. Okay, yeah, let's use the new yellow. I thought I was gonna use this white, but uh, let's use the yellow. Mm, yeah, I have like 25 yards of this, so I have plenty. I, let's see, how long am I going to cut these? These panels should be about 18, 17 and a half inches. Um, so it needs to be at least, let's just say at least 36 inches plus a few extra. So I think I'm going to cut 45 inch long pieces. I'll let you know in a minute if that worked out. also need my big safety pen again. Um, I'm going to start, I just cut one of them. I'm going to see if I actually want to do um, this style with two drawstrings or if I just want one drawstring because I actually don't even know. I don't know. Let me just put this one in and we'll talk about it. So I have one drawstring in the bag. Um, definitely think I want two of them. Okay. Yeah. Just confirmed. I want two. So this will be one. I'm going to go ahead and safety pin these ends together and work on the other drawstring. I like the length though. I'm going to keep it to the like 45 or 46 inches that I cut this out at. And I like the little pop of yellow. That's cute. Okay. Okay. So same thing as the other bag. Um, I have this one on this side and I'm going to start feeding my um, drawstring through from the opposite side. So 
so now we have our little drawstring pulls and this one. Okay, I think that's great. I was worried that the drawstring top would be a little bit too small and it is a little bit smaller than I thought. So I think I will adjust the measurements that I recommend you guys cut out if you wanna make a bag similar. Um, but it's not as small as I was worried it was gonna be. I was really worried that I had made my little drawstring top just way too small, but it's gonna work and I'm not gonna have to take it apart. Um, yeah, so let me just knot the ends and fix my little drawstring ties and then we'll wrap everything up. Yay, oh my gosh, okay. This is the finished sweater knitting project bag. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, and since I can't remember what I even filmed yesterday, did I show you this one all complete and done? I think I did, right? Um, I'm obsessed with this one. I think it turned out so cute. The little beauty shop fabrics from Cotton and Seal have been my favorites for a long time. Um, and then this little coordinating, it's not even from the same fabric line, but just, you know, the colors, it's just perfect. And then I used the Tula Bananas. Oh my gosh. Um, obsessed with this. So I have that one and then yeah, should I put some sweater stuff in this one? Let me put my sweater stuff. <laughs> uh, I think I showed y'all yesterday that I started the sweater, right? So here is kind of where it's at. It's a top down. So I've just got, you know, a few inches. Um, absolutely loving it. Put it in my bag. And then I still have to get the rest of my yarn unwound from my sweater and then washed and straightened. Um, and I'll need to do that, not that soon, but like in the next few weeks probably. But yeah, so here is the bag like with stuff in it. Ah, I love it. I do think, I use pretty lightweight fusible. I do think this bag, if you wanted it to be a little bit more sturdy and stand up on its own better, um, you could use a slightly stiffer, um, fusible fleece, like a thick version, or double it up on the lining and the outside. But I mean, this is just a little project bag to keep all my sweater parts. Um, so I'm really happy with it. And yeah, love it. Okay, I think that's where I'm gonna leave you because I have a feeling this is gonna be a very long video with two full project bag tutorials. <laughs> um, and I wanna get back to knitting on my sweater. So I'm gonna go do that. I hope everybody has a wonderful day full of crafty fun and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!